Hello. Welcome to Q&A Friday. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Uh, my website is... <sighs> JasonNewland.com Jason New... Well, sounds like I'm saying Dooland. Newland. N-E-W-L-A-N. It's a bit warm in here. Don't mind now. It's just my cardigan. So, what's on my website, you may ask? Oh, okay. Well, now I've got a new thing where Every time, oh, oh blimey, I'll stop you all in a minute. Every time I make a new recording, I post on the first page, you know, the, the main page of the website, the audio recording that you can stream. Also, there is the video, 10 hour video, which is also on YouTube which you can play on the actual website. It's embedded. Um, also, there will be the ability, you can actually download all four versions of the recording for free on my website. You just go down to Let Me Boy to Sleep, just click on that and or 1,010 million or whatever there is, episodes are there that you can download. Yeah. Uh. So, I've also got a Facebook group, blah, blah, blah. Jason Newland's Boring Group. If you join, you can kind of be in, in, the, in the know, in the fold, as it were. You get you get to ask me questions and especially for Q and A Friday and stuff like that. But I have five questions asked for this week, so I'm okay for this week. And yeah, just you get to sort of meet other people that are also interested in what I do. So in my head, I have. Oh, God, blimey. I wasn't yawning before I started doing this. Ancestry a DNA kit. My DNA test kit came through today. Wow. Uh -huh. So, I'll be doing that and sending that off probably tomorrow. It's a bit late now to send it off today. Don't know how long it takes to get back. Probably the end of the, probably a week, maybe longer. But that'd be interesting because I'm glad I read the instructions. Because you know I got a little tube to fill up. But it's, uh, it's just um, saliva that they want. I'm glad because I didn't realise that. So I'm pretty pretty pleased I read the instructions first. Otherwise. It might not have. Well, they might have sent it back. Just, just what I'm saying. So Vinny started barking already, which is good. Brilliant. Put bill cream in my hair earlier. Don't know why I'm telling you that, but it's. Uh, I can't read this very well. It's uh, the light isn't so good. It's quarter well twelve minutes past four p.m. So it's a little bit. It's still quite nice outside. Uh, it doesn't get dark now till just before seven. I'll put that over there for now. Come on, you can sit down, cuddles. You haven't had your dinner, have you? You know, he woke me up this morning about one o'clock. Just hassling me. I didn't know why. Why was he hassling me? And he was like literally just staring at me. And then whenever I was trying to go back to sleep, he was jumping on me. So eventually I got up and I thought, 
oh, he needs to go do wee-wees. So I take him outside, and he looked at me. I said the wrong word. I didn't say outside. Out. <laughs> and he, I couldn't see if he did a wee-wee or not because it's too dark out there. I had my torch with me, but I didn't want to really shine it too much where he was because he was just near someone's window. I didn't want him to think that I was looking in. And that's the whole point of having, you know, night vision goggles, isn't it? So that people don't know you're looking. No, I wasn't wearing night vision goggles. I wasn't. Honestly, I wasn't. I wasn't. And so we got back upstairs. I lay down. And again, he's jumping on me. And like making that, like, <coughs> making that noise. And I'm like, what? Your bean toilet. What, what else could there be? And then he was licking his lips, and I thought, no. He doesn't want to eat. It's food out there. But he came out, and he didn't want the food that was there. But he sat there and waited. So I changed the food, got him some fresh food, and he gobbled it all up. And, oh, got a fly. Got a fly in a room that he's chasing so yeah that was it and then he had his dinner had some water and he was happy then and then he went back to sleep until 10 o'clock which was a lot later than i was asleep i was up at i think five doing my editing and then when i finished the editing no, not 10 o'clock. It wasn't 10. I lied. So I did the editing, which took ages because of all the barking he did yesterday. And uploaded to all that stuff. So that took... Yeah, it probably took to about 8 o'clock. So it was all done. And then had a little nap, but I just on the settee. So I just sat here, listened to some music until about nine. And then we went out because boxing was on at 10. It was in Australia. So I wanted to Sydney, Sydney. So it might have been half nine. I did some stuff, did some more work on the, the website, I guess, try, yeah, making the video and changing a website to be updated for the new recording and all that stuff because yesterday was healing thursday which i created yesterday and i did get a message just to let you know that well, it was good news for molly I don't really feel I should really mention it on here, but it was good news. So um, I'll let Molly post on the group. I'll ask her permission before I post anything on the group, because at the moment she's not able to get onto the group, the you know the Facebook group. So I'm just looking at something. Okay, and that's it really, so I did that healing, I don't know, three healing Thursdays, three or four, three, I don't know, and that's been, that's been quite popular today actually, and with the YouTube channel, I'm now only uploading 10 hour versions of my recordings that I've just done just the new recordings, 10 hours long with a dark screen. So after 10 seconds, the screen goes black and you can listen for 10 hours and there's no disruption and there's no, um, yeah, the I guess just the screen will be dark if you've got it on the full screen, whether it's a TV or iPad or your phone and there's no music in the background at all 
because that would go against YouTube's rules. Uh, so that's what I'm doing when I make a recording. So I'm making a video, 10 hour long video. I also make, which is no music. There is the four different versions of recordings that I make for audio. One without music, one with music, two hours and um, five hours and 10 hours long. And the five and 10 hours long versions have affirmations, counting down, body scans, you know, just like hours and hours of me just waffling on about relaxation and things like that. And the 10 hour ones are the most popular recordings that I've ever done. The always the 10 hour ones, way more popular than any of the others. So I will continue to do that. I mean, I probably would prefer to do it without any music because I don't know how, if that would go down okay, if that would be acceptable. But even though it's copyright free music, I still kind of like the idea of maybe just not having any music at all. But, you know, it it's all depends really. It all depends. <sighs> and relax. So this is Q&A Friday, again, and I don't know how many there are now, I generally don't know how many recordings I've done for Q&A Friday, I'm not even 100% sure of how many Let Me Boy to Sleep I've done, a few. A few, what have I done? Right, this, the one I'm recording now, is now from the Let Me Boy to Sleep canon, is 1,207 since 2018. So, yeah, that's a few, isn't it? It's a few. I'm not even sure, I mean... I have to go back months to find out the first Q&A Friday. I've done that before though, haven't I? So I don't know why I'm doing it again. Yeah, it's got, I've got to go back too far into the past to find it. Because it was probably, well it was in the summer. Now it's October. I'm already behind on my, my Open University deep my open university degree course. I'm behind. I should have started. I'm not like hugely behind, but the first week's already nearly over. But the it's an introductory week, and I've not done it. Wow! Can you believe it? I? That video of me spoon feeding Vinny was the 29th of August. Wow, doesn't seem that long ago. I remember doing that. I need to do a few more videos of him. I just forget. I do, I just forget to do them because I see him all the time. I just, I guess, take it for granted that he's here, but. Wow, I can't go back any further. 23rd of August, right? was the 21st Q&A Friday. Now I've stopped numbering them now because of how many I've done. So four, eight. Wow, so that was August. July, May, no June, May, April, March, March, April, May, June, July, August. So probably May. Uh, March or April was when I did the first one. February, March. Wow, it's it's just time, isn't it? It's weird. 
Time. Time just goes. <sighs> so I'm wishing you, I wish everyone well. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that listens to these recordings or watches the videos or li listens to the videos on YouTube or subscribes to my YouTube channel or visits my website. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Which brings us to the questions, baby. Let's do the questions. Yeah. So. I. I'll be honest, right? Okay. The Q and A, uh, the Healing Thursdays. I don't know if they're any use. I generally don't know. I mean, people are listening to them, but I don't know. It's just. It's one of those things I don't, I kind of, maybe it's a self-doubt thing, but I just like, just wonder, why do people listen <laughs> to any of my stuff? But but I'm glad, I'm, you know, I'm very grateful to those that do. Um, this week I've done, I've been pretty good actually as far as sticking to the plan that I had. So I did Sunday papers on Sunday. I did Monday's Boring Objects, which was about Greece, the movie. I then did Tuesday's... Uh -huh. Trivia Tuesday. What is that? 24th of September. I don't know what that is. Plastic carrier bags. I got no idea what that was for. So I did Trivia Tuesday on the Tuesday. And that was about Australia. And I did Whisper Wednesday on Wednesday. There's a picture of a penguin cleaning his teeth with chocolate toothpaste. Yeah, I like that picture. And then I did Healing Thursday. So this is q &A Friday, so I'm going to get on with it. But I think it's quite weird. Not weird, but unusual for me to be so... Uh, organised. Is that the right word? Organised? <laughs> so, I've got five people have questioned me. Send me questions. I've got Ali, Jove, Christine, Diana, and Anne. So, I don't know. I do. I just go from the beginning to the end. I don't think there are any questions from last week that I didn't do. There was last week for the week before, or there was from the week before for last week. But I don't think there was this week. Maybe there's an easier way of doing this. I mean, collecting the, the questions. I'm not sure. Any ideas? Any ideas? I mean, I thought about maybe collecting the questions on my website. Or I did also say to people, like, and I, I'm happy to, well, I did on my podcast, said I'm happy to answer questions if you post it on YouTube as well. So I guess that's another way you can post. Oh, I don't know. It was, to be fair, it seems to be working okay. And to get five questions is cool. That's 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 easily enough for one recording. Uh, especially as I don't always answer directly, do I? I'll do. I'll try. I'll try to. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven questions. So there's five people asking seven questions. So I'll start with Ali, or Ali, Ali. 
Um, do you yourself ever suffer from insomnia? Funny enough, last night I had a bit of a bad night. But that was more to do with this little one being so restless. And kind of harassing me a bit. I think when I went to bed, he was starting to wake up. And he was being very aware and alert of outside sounds. And I remember I turned round, turned over from one side to the other. Like from laying on my left side, no, from laying, laying, yeah, laying on my left side to my right side maybe. And he started jumping on me. This is before he woke me up to, to get some food. And he was a little bit restless. So it wasn't, I guess it wasn't so much insomnia, just being disturbed. I think maybe. And I think when. Okay. When I have an appointment to go somewhere. And I have to. I'm a little bit of reclusive to be honest. Um, so when I have to go to an appointment. Whether it's doctors. Whether it's dentists. Whether it's. To, well, I have to go and collect my prescription, but that's that usually that's usually not an appointment. But when I have to actually be somewhere at a specific time, and it's never close by, it's always a journey to get there. I find that I'm not relaxed when I'm in bed. It's not because I think I'm going to oversleep because I I generally try and make my appointments in the afternoon and also I wake up early every day now pretty much regardless of what time I go to bed even if I went up if I went to bed at one o'clock in the morning which I don't but if I did I'd still be up by eight I'd still wake up because I just wake up in the morning now I used to sleep during the day for years until about two years ago. And I used to go to bed sometimes five, six in the morning, sometimes even later. And I'd, I'd be in bed till early afternoon and I'd get up and that, that suited me. Because then if someone ever took my time, they you know, wanted to do stuff or whatever, wanted to talk to me, at least I knew I had all night. Where I could get stuff done. During the day when I'm awake. If someone knocks on my door. Or someone wants to. Needs me for something. I'm. Interrupted. If I'm. You know if in the middle. Let's say right now. If I'm making this. Re well I am making this recording. Making this recording. If someone knocks on my door. Which they may well. Do. It's not a case of, I mean, it's easy to edit it out when I do the editing tomorrow morning. But I can lose my flow. I can lose, I mean, you might argue like, what, what do you mean, what flow? You're just talking silly stuff about nothing. There's no flow there. There's nothing. You, you could argue that, but it... I get into a, I suppose, a little bit of a, kind of a, sort of a rhythm of some kind. And it's nice to not have that interrupted. That's why when this one starts barking, it, it does wind me up, I'll be honest, it does. Because I, I don't care the rest of the time, but unless it's at night or early in the morning, because I care that he's, I don't want him to disturb the neighbours. 
So it's not for me, I'm not bothered for myself. Unless I'm in bed and he's barking right in my ear, then yeah, because that's an awful way to wake up or to be woken up. He's sighing, he knows I'm talking about him. Don't you, Vin? Eh? You know, it took him over a year before he met the, before he did what he's doing right now. He's laying right next to me, cuddled up to me, my arms, my hands on top of him, just resting. I'm like stroking him occasionally. He would not let me do this for probably the first year and a half of living with me. And even when he eventually did start to lay down next to me, as soon as I put my hand on him, he'd jump off. And then he got he got used to me having my hand on him. And then, you know, I'd just, it'd be stationary. I wouldn't move my hand or my arm. And then I'd kind of start, like, just stroking him. And I'd wake him up and he'd jump off. Or other times, I'd just be doing it. And he'd wake up and he'd look back at me like, who are you, get off, and he'd run off. Now, doesn't care. Or he, he's happy to be just cuddled up to me. And that's nice, but I can't believe it took so long. It's very strange. Okay, what was the question? <laughs> Do you yourself ever suffer from insomnia? Okay, not generally these days. But if I do have somewhere that I, I kind of, when I say I have to go, I mean, technically I don't have to. I mean, none of us have to do anything. We have to breathe. We have to eat. You know, there's certain things we have to do, but, um, and, you know, it's like, well, I have to go to work. Yeah, but you don't have to, but there are consequences if you don't, you know, as far as things go like that. But with the dentist, if I don't turn up, I will lose the NHS treatment. And I've waited 10 months to get NHS treatment with that, with that dentist. Because I had, uh, I joined them at the beginning of the year. I, caught, I think I paid nearly £300 to have a tooth removed. And because I paid the money, they agreed to put me on the waiting list to be NHS, which means I get uh, free treatment. But there was, well, it's more than 10 months. There's, well, let's say 10 months. It was at the end of January, probably. So, yeah, 10 months. It's the end of October that I got my appointment. Luckily, I didn't need, I haven't needed any treatment between now and then. Or then and now, rather. Or then, then and then, because now hasn't happened yet, has it? So back then until future then. Yeah. I don't want to have any more teeth out. I cherish the three that I have left. I just, they just, they become, I become good friends with them. It's a little bit, you know, when you've got a crowd, you don't know anyone, but then, then there's only like a few left. They say it's a party and it's so busy, then everyone leaves and there's only a few of you left and you kind of bond. You start making friends. That's what I feel like with my mouth and my teeth. As I've had teeth removed, it's like, oh, I'm going to start being nice to these people, these teeth. No teeth removed on the, on the top at all. But I've had teeth removed on the bottom. Uh, it's all the ones, well not all of them, but all the only ones I've had removed are the ones where I used to chew. None of the ones at the front. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. So, what time is it when I started this? It was like 12 minutes past. It's now 20 to 5. How can that time have gone past so fast? I've not even answered the first question yet. 
time is cheating me. So, do I... Su I used to suffer from insomnia. But most of it's been... Okay. In the past, when I've had insomnia, it's there's been a few different reasons. One is because I'm just not tired. I've gone to bed. And... The only reason I've gone to bed is because I have to get up early in the morning. Let's say I had a job uh, that started at six, so I had to be up at five or half four. But I wasn't tired. Guarantee I'll be tired when I wake up at half four, but right now I'm not tired. So I'll be laying in bed, and yeah, it would be, I couldn't just fall asleep at will but then other times worry used to used to keep me awake sometimes stress that was another one in the past um, but the medication I'm on does cause some drowsiness with me so falling asleep is fairly easy anyway but I haven't had much problem sleeping for a long time, a long, long time. Yeah, I could just have a, I can sleep during the lawnmower in the garden. I say during, I mean, I don't mean like I'm not on the grass sunbathing when it's happening or I'm, and I'm not the one doing the lawn mowing because that'd be dangerous to be sleeping, doing that probably, especially if it's one of those wheelie drivey ones. But if it's outside, I can fall asleep during that. So yeah, I guess a no really is generally the answer. But I do know how to send myself to sleep if needed. And I would say I'm probably more relaxed than I used to be. Uh, although without getting all heavy and that, when uh, I lost a friend just just under a year ago and I was up all night. There was no way in the world I was going to go to sleep. It would it was impossible. But I think in a situation like that, there are no rules. Yeah, I'm not going to beat myself up for not being able to sleep when such a big thing has just happened. So... Yeah, but generally I'm I'm okay with sleeping. I also have an afternoon nap as well. Yesterday I had a nap for an hour and I felt so good afterwards. I just really needed it. Another thing that makes me tired, I know you know the question wasn't what makes me tired. Humans. <laughs> Humans, spending time with people really drains me, and I'm just people I like. Even well, I don't spend time with people I don't like, so um, I just get I feel so drained at the end of it. And I tried to explain this to my brother um, in August, and he. I think he took offence. And I didn't... To say that it takes a lot out of me, maybe that's a better way. I suppose if I say, oh, human beings drain me, that probably sounds quite offensive, maybe. And I don't mean it like that. And you can tell I'm being honest because I did my voice up. I don't mean it. I don't mean it like that. Because I don't, generally. Because not, if it's someone I don't like, then yeah. Or someone that's taking my time up and I don't know them or, you know, something like that. But these are people that I get on well with. But I still find it, if it goes on for too long. And, you know, I used to have a rule. An hour is enough. That's it. And I tell people, I try and be honest with people, I say, look, 
an hour, hour. I don't want to spend any more than an hour talking to anyone ever. Generally, I mean, there's, there are there are occasions when that's not the case, but I just I know my friend used to get he he found it I think a bit offensive, but I say to him, look, I know myself. I know that more than an hour and I will be frustrated. I will be, my energy will be depleted and I want to keep my energy so I can use it to be creative and to make podcasts and to work on the website and to work on all the different aspects of what I do here. Because there's a fair bit goes on in the background. And he seemed to take that like a bit as a negative and other people have as well. And even my brother was like, oh, so being around your family is, is uh, hard for you, is it? It, it? It's like, that's not what I'm saying. But yeah, it is a bit. But it's, it's, not, it's not about... Uh, it's, it's just hard it's hard for me to even comprehend so it's even more difficult for me to explain it to someone else who isn't really listening so yeah it was it's, it's one of those um, it's the same way as if someone says to me if their attitude is why, why would you want to help people you don't know See, I don't understand that. I can't comprehend that. I can't. Why would you not want to help people? What other reason is there to be on the planet if you're not going to help people? You know, it's like, I'm not saying there's no other reason, but for me, why why would someone think that way, that like, that it's a ridiculous thing to do? That's what I'm saying. And we're all different. We all live our lives how we want to live our lives, if we're lucky. So I don't understand that. So they don't kind of understand where I'm coming from either. And that's, I guess, it could be the bipolar, it could be the personality disorder, it could be, it could be just the way I am. It could just be me. I've been like this since I was a kid. It's not an adult thing. It's, but it was a little bit more. I don't know. I kind of hid it when I was a kid. I needed to be on my own. I just because it was too busy, too too much going on. There was four kids, two adults. One one of the kids was tiny, little kid. And there was a lot of noise, and I didn't like any of. I didn't didn't dislike the the people. I just sometimes I found it was too much, too much going on. And other times I loved it being loud and noisy, and I was possibly the loudest out of everyone. So it's not kind of condemning anyone. Just there was times when I needed to get away from it. It might only be for an hour or two. It might be for a week or two. But it's it's kind of difficult as a kid to to have control over your own time. I found in a sense of it's so much of the time is controlled by adults, by parents, by teachers, by you know even friends like demanding time. Not that I had a few, I didn't have a huge amount of friends that I saw outside of school. Only a couple. Uh, so yeah, it was... Uh, but back to the original question. I have had periods when I had insomnia for a fair period. And there was, this was probably, this would have been during my 
anxiety panic attack period 2002 well no 2003 and 2004 those two years were two of the worst years for the anxiety and panic attacks that I was getting and so falling asleep was not always easy but I got through it yeah so there were periods when I just but then if I wasn't working it didn't matter in a sense not not having the anxiety but if I if I wasn't tired I just didn't go to bed it's easy if I if I didn't have to get up in the morning not easy if if I did have to get up in the morning but then there was periods when it wasn't so much insomnia it was I went through periods this this is uh going back to 2000 I went for months and it was during the summer of 2000 months and months where I hardly slept at all I didn't need to sleep and I didn't know anything about mania I didn't know anything about bipolar I didn't know anything about any of that stuff and it was still another 10 years before I got diagnosed so I didn't I knew that maybe I need to talk about the whole build up to all the mental health issues but I try not to get too too caught up in all that stuff in these podcasts but the fact is it took really the first time I got medication was probably around August 1995 and I got diagnosed and that was with depression stress and stuff and I got diagnosed with bipolar affective disorder in 2011 December and then I got diagnosed again with bipolar affective disorder and uh, um, emotionally unstable personality disorder at the same time as well and I had I still saw a psychologist for a year and a half I think but that was in 2013 or was it 2014 so I I basically got diagnosed 2011 took some medication the medication completely knocked me out to the point as I didn't don't even remember going to bed and I woke up and like, wow. And I found that a little bit scary, if I'm honest with you. And I was very drowsy. I was very, yeah, so I just, no. And I was supposed to, and I had a, I had a job and I didn't, I couldn't function, so I stopped taking the medication. I took it for a few days, but then, or maybe a week, I don't know, I can't remember. And then I got ill again, so yeah. But there was, during 2000, that was one period, not the only period, but that was one particular period. I remember because I was building websites and that's when I first got really excited about um, how to build a website to, you know, with code to then just put it into a browser, a website browser, like... Um, uh, Blimey, employ, uh, what's it called, EI, I forget, you know, just like Google or whatever, um, but it was a different one, and then it'd open up and there'd be whatever you chose to put into it, it would be there, in colour, whatever colour to type in, maybe you could put graphics in, and that just fascinated me, and I got obsessed with it, so I was doing that all day, early hours of the morning till early hours of the morning pretty much and I was getting sometimes three or four hours sleep but I didn't need any sleep I was forgetting to eat 
I didn't need to eat. I just, you know, I didn't need to do anything other than build the websites. I actually spent, like, I had books on HTML, so I, I kind of could learn how to do stuff. Now, what the weird thing about it is, I didn't have to do this, but I, I chose to do this. I wanted to figure out how a hyperlink works. And for those who don't know, don't know what it is, but might not know what it's called, what, what, a, hyper, what a hyperlink. It's basically, you know, when you click on a piece of text, it takes you to another, or an image, takes you to another page. That's all that is. So I wanted to figure out how that works. So I had a website and I copied the the code and put that into a, a notebook uh, a notebook file and I started dissecting that page dissecting the code changing checking changing checking deleting checking and I spent about three days doing that solid before I figured out what the code was I could have done it in probably a minute just by looking in a book but I wanted to figure it out myself I wanted to work it out manually and I mean technically I'm never going to get that time back am I <laughs> however for a while that knowledge stayed in my head because when I first started working at Churchill Insurance I decided that it would be quite handy Internet Explorer IE not EI um, I decided what we really needed was it'd be handy to have something on the computer which I could just tap into and because I didn't have internet the staff couldn't use internet so but they did have Internet Explorer the browser so what I did is I built myself information so just things like the details about breakdown cover so i didn't have to keep looking through folders and stuff while i was on the phone to a customer so i built in i built this like little website very simple with lots of information that i needed about the company about the different companies that churchill worked with breakdown cover uh trying to think whatever like services that were offered just things like that and some other stuff there was useful information like phonetic alphabet, um, the registration number years, and these things, things that were useful and scripts that we had to read out as well. Or well, someone saw me doing that. I think someone was sitting behind me, and they were looking over my shoulder like, "What was that?" I said, "What? What do you mean? What's that?" He said, "What's that there?" I said, "It's a computer." Because I was a little bit um annoying back then even more so than now maybe and he said no on the screen i said what well, it's text it's writing i know it's writing what is it so i told him it's just basically it's uh, a little helpful thing like a little website but it's but it's not on the internet it's just on the on the server on, on it was just on my computer actually so he said, could I have it? I said, oh, if you want. And I think it had a calculator on there as well, so you could work out percentages for your bonus and stuff like that, whatever. So I just we could email each other. So I emailed it to him, and he started using it. And before I knew it, quite a few people started using this, this little thing that I'd built. And I got probably about a week, two weeks later, got a tap on my shoulder while I was on the phone and there was a very very large man and a manager well, I said what and I just finished my call well nothing they said wait until you finish your course so I finished my call and I said what's going on I said can you follow us I thought what the heck's going on so they led me into this office and there was I think three people in there with me 
and he said, and he had a computer and he like opened it up and said, is this, is this yours? I said, well, I, it's not my computer. He said, no, not the computer. The, I, said, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. He said, did you do that? That, um, what did they call it back then? Because it wasn't a website, it was intranet, not, not internet. So intranet was something that's shared in, within a company. But we hadn't done that. It wasn't on the server. Well, unless everything on the computers was on the server, so maybe it was. But it was just emailed. It wasn't like something that was um, available for everyone to tap into. Anyway, I said, yeah. He said, how did you do that? Because they, they couldn't understand how I got it on there. They thought I must have gained access to the internet and I think that's what they wanted to know like how do I get access to the internet and I said I didn't get access to the internet I said how else could it have got up there and I said I built it they said what? I said uh, yeah how did you do that I said it's easy and I did this off the top of my head as well because this, cause this is back like 2002 and I'd spent a year and a half building websites so from 2000 to the end till 2001 summer time so I still had that stuff in my brain it's weird and the rest a lot of it was just text and information that I could just add myself anyway from the scripts and stuff so it was like oh and they said well you you did that all by yourself and then I just thought okay here we go and they all started singing together there's a hero if you look at Jason's face but I thought, well, am I getting in trouble? Am I getting in trouble? What was going on? And they said, well, this man here, and they pointed to the really tall bloke, he spent the last six months putting together something like this for to roll out for everyone on the sales floor with information and stuff like that. And we're going to have it on the intranet. I said, okay. And you just done that off the top of your head said yeah and they couldn't believe it now it wasn't there was nothing sophisticated about it at all it was it was the most basic thing ever really really basic but they they were trying to build something that was I suppose really good and really snazzy and stuff and the weird thing about it three months later that the, the big tall bloke left and during my time working there they never did it never never did it a couple of people that worked there added stuff to it they could uh, someone put um yeah they did stuff that I couldn't do so it all added it to it and before you know it everyone's kind of using this thing I mean I'm sure they've they did get it done eventually but I mean, for a second there, I thought they were going to offer me a job. You know, like, well, I should have said that, shouldn't I, really? I said, well, let me come and work and do that. I'll, I'll help build it. I could have changed my entire, well, I say my entire career. I never had a career. But it could have changed my whole kind of, yeah, it could have done, couldn't it? I mean, technically, I I started a career in counselling because after three years of degree of a degree course, well, after two years, I did I started counselling people, and that was kind of supposed to be my career for from forty to when I retire, but that didn't kind of work out very well. It lasted for about four years, I think. So, no, I wasn't 40, I was 39. 
39 to 67, that would have been, so 28 years. 28 years, that would have been my last career, or my, I don't know, maybe I'll end that, I, I, I might have another career when I retire, I don't know. I mean, at the moment I've got nothing to retire from, but you know, that's another story altogether. But I didn't need to sleep during that period in 2000. So it, it, it wasn't so much insomnia, but there were times when I would go to bed thinking I should sleep, but I didn't want to. So I'd get back up and carry on with the uh, building website pages. Another time that I struggled was this is when I had... I worked in this pub. Now, numbers isn't really the way my brain seems to work as far as calculating off the top of my head. It's just never been something that I've warmed to so far. And I had this job in a pub I don't know why, well I do know why I got it. I got the job because I thought I might have a social life if I worked in a pub. That's what I thought. And I was wrong. <laughs> I just, I thought that maybe I could fit in with society. But I've never, never done that yet and I guess I never will. But I really thought that I could like, be one of the crowd and be no no it didn't work and I ended up I didn't realize I'd sort of joined the roughest pub in the town so I was working in it was in a hotel the hotel was nice but the pub it was like a side pub to the hotel it's completely separate really and it was rough 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 Then he's snoring. So I was struggling. I remember I was struggling to get to sleep because I kept counting. That was weird. Uh, I struggled a bit when I fractured my back. It was quite hard to sleep at all when I had that going on. And also when I broke my ribs, that was very difficult. But that's more of like an obvious standard thing, which isn't really insomnia is it it's just it's natural to with a I had two fractures in my back I couldn't stand up I couldn't sit down you know what I mean it's like I couldn't really lay down I couldn't there's nothing I could do without having problems so it wasn't such a big deal really as far as uh, sleeping I just caught up when I could. And as with the fract yeah, with the broken ribs, another thing, you know, like laying down, moving, it's just yeah, everything's strange. Especially as I normally sleep on my left. That's my predominant sleeping and the rib I broke was on the left side. The last one, which is a couple of years ago. Not my last rib, because I've got a few left. So I was, I was having to sleep on my right side, but it was, oh, weird. But other than that, no, not really. I don't really have uh, issues with insomnia. Um, what is your favourite activity to do when you can't sleep? Um... Right, they, they do, yeah, that is kind of connected to the first question. Um, well, in in those moments, because like, there are moments like that, I would say, watch a movie, get online and do some work on a podcast, or on the website, just do something that I would perhaps do during the day. See, I quite like the night time. 
I know although I'm I'm now sleeping at night, I do miss it a little bit because it's quiet. You know, those early hours of the morning is quite nice to just, I mean, I, not so much now with this one here because chances are if I'm awake, he's going to be awake and he might be like barking and stuff, so that wouldn't be good. But that was before I had him. And sometimes it'd be nice just to sit in silence for a few hours and work on something. Yeah, that'd be nice. Or watch a movie, watch a sitcom, listen to some music. Or do all of those things at the same time. Well, not watch a movie, listen to a sitcom, listen to music. Can't do all of those three at the same time. But, you know, maybe working on a website whilst listening to music. Sometimes. And I, some, I do do that. I do that now. Not, not right this minute. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a point where I won't... If I go to bed and I'm, and I'm just, like, wide awake, I, I, I don't just... You know, generally, if, if it's annoying me, then I get up. But usually when I go to bed, I'm tired. And also when I go to bed, I don't care if I fall asleep. I'm quite happy just to lie there. You know, like tonight, it's Friday night, I listen to LBC Radio between, yeah, at 10 o'clock in the evening. And there's a show there till 2, 10 till, no, 10 till 1. And I listen to that. And then if I wake up and it's still running, I, you know, if it's gone past 1 o'clock, I'll turn it off. But I like to listen to it, so I'm happy to be awake for an hour or two hours, which I never am. But, you know, I'm quiet because I'm listening to it. So it doesn't matter. I'm not bothered if I fall asleep or not. If anything, a little bit disappointed because I don't get a chance to listen to the show. Because it's funny sometimes. It's just... it's. I guess it's nice to have a... Like a familiar thing. Like weekly thing, you know. Like someone's... Right now, someone's going out of their front door one of the, in one of the flats in the, this building. It's not related to what I was just talking about. But Vinny's not heard it yet. The second he hears it, hears it. The second he hears it, if he hears it, it will be going. It will go off. All we hear is... <laughs> Unless he's listening to me, he's thinking, nope, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm just going to lay here. I'm not going to react to anything, including your accusations. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, in those events, I just get up. If I don't, if I'm there and I just don't fancy lying down, then I just get up and do something. Just do what I would normally do in a day. Maybe watch a bit of telly. But generally, you know, I don't care if I fall asleep or not. I'm usually tired when I go to bed. But I'm not bothered, you know, it's not really, it's just lying down, being comfortable. It's just quite nice. Maybe listen to an audio book, listen to the radio. Maybe listen to some classical music. So I generally have to have something in the background for at least the first couple of hours because of this one. So that he can fall asleep because otherwise he'll just keep barking. Which is a little bit of a shame. I actually like to just sit there with no sound. I did it the other day and... It was so nice just to have nothing. Even if there's sound, you know, from the garden or from neighbours. 
I like the uh, the fact that I've got no sound going on, and there's quite a relax. Get yeah, that does relax me. So the next question: Does Vinny ever suffer from insomnia? Oh, okay. Um, I suppose not. It's hard to tell, really. You have to ask him. Um, I don't know. There are times when he, or we're, when he doesn't want to sleep. He sleeps a lot. He sleeps a lot during the day and at night. He's, you know, I'm surprised he's not, because I don't have a garden for him to play in. And if I did, or if I had another dog, he'd be running around with a dog and I guess he'd have a bit more fun. Which is a shame, but I couldn't handle two. One's enough. But sometimes he will just decide that he doesn't want to be in bed. And he'll get up and he'll come into the living room. And he will maybe play with a bone and then he'll come and sit on the settee. And I won't see him for the rest of the night. That happens every now and then. Doesn't happen as much as it used to. He did that all the time when I first got him. Didn't want to. He didn't want to be anywhere near me when I first when he first moved in. Um. So thank you for those questions. Uh, the next one is Jove. What's the nicest thing someone has done for you? Wow. Well, I don't have a drink of water. Hmm. Um. There's lots of things I guess people have done for me. How far back do we want to go? So there's even things that people have done that I didn't know they'd done until decades later. So I'll start at the beginning. Uh, I will miss some stuff out by accident, so you know. But I'm going to try and remember some things. I found out five years ago. And this is at my stepmom's birthday party. So 60th, I think. Don't tell anyone I said that. And she... I saw my auntie. And she told me that... So it basically what happened is I was about... Between three and six months old when my mum took off. She left us all in, in the house. And my dad came home and found us in there. And he was shouting at her like, Why did you leave them with me? <laughs> Why did you take them with you? So apparently my uncle, who's not here anymore with us, he was at the time, well obviously it was at the time, but he was also at the time when I spoke to my auntie. Him and her, who both had kids, were going to get a huge house and adopt us. Have us both, have us living with him and her together. Because, you know, just, I don't know where my dad was at this point, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused, but... Um, me and my little brother, me and my older brother, we were living in care with foster parents, and my little brother, my oldest brother, was living with my nan and granddad for well, from about six months till about two years old, roughly, give or take. And the so apparently, so my auntie and my uncle wanted to, they got together and they wanted to bring us up with them. I don't know if the plan was for my dad to be living there as well. I've got no idea because he won't talk about stuff like that. So 
but she told me and um, the social services said no they refused to allow it ironic that they allowed her to <laughs> come and get us and live with her in Newcastle but hey so the they said no and I, I realised that what an amazing thing I, I thanked her But I'd had literally no kind of a relationship with my uncle. It was a hello. That was it. There was really hardly any conversation at all with him. At all, you know, since from the age of seven onwards. I just, I didn't see him very often in later years. But when I was a kid, I used to see him fairly regularly. And he just didn't have, didn't really talk to me. I didn't know that, I mean, for him to want to do that, get a house and help raise me, showed he loved me. He loved me and he loved my brothers. And, boy, you don't do it out of hate, do you? He obviously loved us, so I didn't realise that. So I wish I'd have an opportunity to really say thank you, but unfortunately... Just after that, um, yeah, the next year he passed away. So, the other thing, I would say thank you. Some people have done nice things. I would say, it's a twofold thing, really. Uh, my dad... He rescued us from the children's home when I was, just before I was seven years old. He didn't know where we were because my mum came back when I was two and took us to, to Kent, not Kent, to uh, Newcastle and he didn't know where we were. And we didn't have the internet back then and it, it wasn't so easy to find people. So... They so he he rescued us from that children's home. So and I suppose that the next person really is his new wife, and had just been married for probably less than a year. So he met she married him. He didn't have any kids. Or not living with him. And suddenly she went from that to living with three kids, one who was eleven. One who was nine and one who was seven. So, you know, I mean, that's, so I, she took us in, well, I've got to speak for myself, really. She, she adopted me or whatever, and yeah, so that was a pretty amazing thing. Who else? What other things have people done that were lovely? Um, it's hard to really pin it down to like one thing, the best thing that anyone's ever done. going through the years going through the years can't think of anything else during that period going through the childhood years no can't think of anything I really enjoyed getting my bike I, I, re I, I wanted a racer I dreamt about getting a racer and Christmas Day, I got a racer, like bike, pedal bike, and I was like, that was the best, best present ever, because at the time I was walking, doing my paper round, and I, I just thought how, how much easier it would be if I could just cycle, it'd just be done a lot quicker, and you know, so... But, you know, other than that, I'm trying to think things that people have done. Um, uh, 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 uh. I would say my uncle, who's on my stepmom's side, what he did, he was, he was nice. He was kind. 
and yeah, I liked liked him a lot. He was my favourite uncle. And someone did say to me recently, oh, it's, it's easy to be it's easy to be easy to be kind when you're rich. But I don't think that's actually the case. Is I've met a lot of rich people that weren't particularly nice or friendly or kind or generous. But he was all those things. And it's really I think it's you are who you are, aren't you? Really. And he was just lovely. He used to buy us presents and stuff. But it wasn't like he's just always given us stuff. It's just we'd visit and he was nice. So friendly. And and that was just anyway. So that was that him as a person, not not anything specific, but just him as a person. A gift, a gift, anyone's, or help me rather, it's not about gifts, is it? it's about someone, what is the question, I've forgotten, what's the nicest thing someone's done for you, nicest thing, blimey, there may be things that I don't know, okay, so there may be, I have a feeling that my dad got me out of trouble a few times, so, but he never told me. And I'm talking probably my later teenage years. I think he might have kind of bailed me out a couple of times. But again, he, he kind of just did it without telling me he did it. So that might have been a really that might have been a really nice thing that he did. But to be fair, he did put me up three times as a I'm gonna use the word adult, but I wasn't really an adult. I guess I was. Uh, nineteen I was. I was nineteen. No, I was just turned twenty when I moved out a third time. So he put me up when I was seventeen. It put me up again when I was eighteen. This is just for a couple of months, and he put me up again when I was nineteen for a little bit longer. This was. So April till about September, May, June, July, August, for about five months. But the other ones was for about three months, I'd say. The first one was from probably March, April, May, so you're probably about two months. The second time was probably January till probably two, no more than three months each time. It probably seemed like a lot longer for my dad. But, you know, time time just time went a lot slower back then. <laughs> it seemed to. So yeah, I so that was that was kind. But as far as the nicest thing ever, it's hard. I'm trying to think. There should be one thing that's really obvious. And there's something that does jump out, but So even jumping forward, I've had help getting jobs. Uh, I had, you know, I, I basically got a job at the beginning of 2001 with zero, uh, we, but I didn't have a, a hope in heck of getting a job because of my CV it was so bad, so crowded, so many jobs. The chance of me getting a job in a call center working in insurance because I had no experience and, you know, I couldn't get, I couldn't get references or anything uh, from all these different places. So I was able to get a reference for a long period, for a whole 10 years from someone. So that helped me to get my foot into like a proper job. And once I got that experience, then that's as far back as I went. But it's, I mean, I did, I did technically kind of work there. It wasn't really a job, but it was, I did help out and I did do some stuff there for years. But so I was friends with the club anyway for 
10 years previous to that. So I thought it'd look better if I just had one job on my CV and it seemed to do the trick. I think I just put down that I went to college. Went to college when I left school and then I went to, then I worked in this place for 10 years. Which showed that I was good, a good worker and loyal. Which I always have been, to be fair. The, th the weird thing is, I did go on, when I worked there, I did go on to be one of the best people that I had, while I was there anyway. So I definitely, I earned my, I earned my pay, as it were. But that was 20 odd years, over 25 years ago now nearly. Blimey. So, so that was a, what, what she did for me was really amazing. Um, my friend, I won't go into it, but my friend Noel, Noel, he's helped me um, so much in so many different ways over the years. Uh, helped me with self-confidence. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Uh, helped me just so many different ways. Uh, trust, he trusted me. I even used to have his, his uh, home keys for his house. So when I used to visit from, when I moved away from London, I used to visit, and one day he just came up and just handed me his house keys. He said, oh, these are spare keys, you might as well have them. Which meant I could just come up and just stay at his whenever I wanted. So yeah, that's someone that trusted me. He actually, there was a time when he would put, he would come up to me on an evening and he'd give me, he looked to put £2,000 in my hand, I said, put it in your pocket, cash, and I said, well, and he's just like, hold on to that, until I ask for it later, because he, d he trusted me more than anyone else, in like, because we were friends, he trusted me, so I'd look after, he'd sort of take money out of the tills, the bar tills or whatever, and he'd just put it, get me to look after it. We did it once, because obviously I ran off and spent it all, but I haven't seen him since then. But before that, he, we were good friends. <laughs> £2,000, blimey. I'd never seen that much money. But it was in 20s, so it's not, it's not even like a huge pile, to be fair. But was it 20, so 10, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It's 10 piles. So I think I had like, five piles in each hand or something anyway big pockets I I might have exaggerated the amount it might have been less than 2,000 I'm just thinking that wouldn't be enough room in my pockets for 2,000 there's definitely a nice a nice amount of cash and then it, it asked me to cash up because he, he, he didn't try again he didn't trust Everyone, so he's like, oh, "Can you can you count the money from the till?" So it's like, "Wow." So things like that, it's it's nice. It's just nice to have someone to trust me. And yeah, so he's one of the people that's done the most. I won't go. I can't really go into too much detail because personal, but he he's helped me a lot over the years. And I do owe him a lot. I'm trying to think what else. There's must. There's got to be. I would say, my nan just being my nan. My nan was always there. Always answered the phone. Always invited me in. 
always kind to me. You know, right from the age of seven or whatever I was, when I first kind of got to know her. Always kind to me. Always happy to see me. I was going to say, like a puppy. But even he, this one here is not always happy to see me, but she was always happy to see me. Even if she wasn't, she pretended she was. So I'm trying to think. Um... My friend, my friend at university, she helped me to get through university because I was constantly on the verge of leaving and she helped me get through. So that, that's the really nice thing. She's very supportive of me and just helped me in various different ways. And would listen to me going on and on. It's hard to pick it. I mean, there's plenty of nice people as well that I've not mentioned. To think, trying to think of the nicest thing anyone's ever done. Um, hopefully that's yet to come, maybe. The social worker who wrote a letter for me because uh, I was turned down by the housing office not turned down but I was put on a really low level which meant I would have probably still be waiting now 10 years later to get a council flat but because she'd been round my flat my, my where I was living before and it was mouldy and it was damp you know it was really quite unpleasant and unhealthy as well she wrote me a letter and as soon as she they received the letter and I handed that into the housing they bumped me up so instead of waiting 10 years I think I waited about a couple of months maybe a little bit longer yeah maybe maybe three months but it happened quite quickly. So, yeah, definitely that was that was a really, really, yeah, life changing. Really, to be fair. So that was that was a really nice thing. I mean, you could. I know some people would argue. Well, that's her job. She should do that. Well, no, not really. It's it's her job to be a social worker. She it wasn't her job to write me letters to get me to help me to get a council flat and but it, she wasn't doing anything untoward because what she wrote was true because she actually came to my flat, my home where I was living before with a there was two of them her and I think mental health team and she couldn't believe firstly how tiny the place was and secondly the stink of the damp and the mold and she was like, oh, this is just really not good. So, yeah, she definitely, definitely helped. Definitely was a, um, a nice thing that she did. Trying to think, trying to think, try to, 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 trying to think. I've had people help me out in the past when I've been homeless so that was always it felt like a really really amazing thing they were doing at the time and it's happened so many times I can't pinpoint a particular necessarily time but yeah I've definitely been helped out quite a lot over the years not so much recently but you know when I was like younger I haven't been homeless for a long time now. So I did quite a lot of sofa surfing and just, yeah, for, for years. Living in rooms pretty much from the age of 
16 to 45, no, 44, 16 to 44, what's that, 26, 36, 28 years, that's more than 12 years, I'm trying to think, you could say the nicest thing anyone's done to me, done for me, in a way, was my friend downstairs because because of him I ended up with Andre and Vinny both because of him I wouldn't have had if I'd not met him and if if he hadn't me basically he bought Vinny for me although I paid for it in the end but he you know he he bought it but then he he couldn't yeah I think I paid I ended up paying. <laughs> That's another story. So I wouldn't have this boy sitting next to me lying down asleep if it wasn't for my friend downstairs. And I wouldn't have had Andre if it wasn't for him. So who's just woken up? Did you hear your voice? Did you hear your name being called or being mentioned? Did you? With your ears burning. What a strange expression that is, isn't it? With your ears burning. Like, no. And I'm glad they're not weird. Um, so, yeah, that's two of the nicest things anyone's ever done for me. Getting me... Vinny and getting me Andre. Or giving them to me. And... Yeah, I wouldn't have had either if it wasn't for my friend, the the one that that, that used to live downstairs. But you know, this is trying to think because so that's two two big things because I've had a big impact on my life, both Vinny and Andre, a huge impact on my life. So. And moving here, so the social worker, moving here has had a big impact on my life. Having a place to kind of call home for the first time at the age of 44 felt nice. It's not been easy. I'll be honest with you. It's not been easy. Um, and... But... As I'm sitting here, it's pretty quiet. I'm not cold. I don't go hungry. I have a purpose, I have a reason to get up in the morning. And yeah, got this little boy here who I think he, he might like me a little bit, I'm not sure. So I mean, if you want to go for memories, like trying to think the nicest thing that everyone's anyone's ever done for me, I'm just trying to think. It's just very hard. It's hard to kind of think of a specific thing. I mean, my friend offering me to be a DJ, and, and the reason behind it, I didn't find out till later. Is because he thought that I was heading somewhere quite bad uh, emotionally, so he was trying to help me, and he did help me. So I'm just trying to go forward through my life through thirties. 40s there's lots of people that have helped me over the years a lot of people that I have no contact with I had a very good friend for decades but then we kind of 
fell out or he fell out with me for whatever reason but he was he was very kind to me for a, a long time he used to help me out if I had no money he'd send me like 20 quid in the post uh, always someone to talk to so yeah he's uh, he was one of the most important people in my life up till 10 years ago really yeah I'm trying to think the nicest thing that anyone's ever did I quite like what my stepmom did this is my second stepmom my current stepmom she, it was at her birthday, so it was five years ago. And those two of her friends were in the kitchen area of the house. And she was in there as well. And I walk in and they said, who are you? To me. I said, uh, I'm her son. And they start laughing. Because there's, you know, there's, I think there's like, well, she's 65. I'm 44. I'm 44. I'm 50. Blimey, I'm even making myself younger. I'm 54. She's 65. So it is... 54. 56. 55. 56. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5. So there's 11 years between us. So she looks quite, you know, they, they've obviously realised that I'm not her son. But what she did straight away is she 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 stopped them laughing. I like said, wait, he is my son. She gave me a hug. And they just shut up after that. And that felt nice. It did. Because ultimately... She's earned the right to be called mum. Because she's been there since I was 17. You know, I've been, she's been cooking for me, you know, cooking me dinners and inviting me up and talking to me on the phone and buying me birthday presents and Christmas presents and I've slept in her house loads of times and, you know, every family occasion I've seen her since I was 17 years old. So what's that? 17, 27, 37, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So it's 37 years. I think she's earned the right to be called mum, I do believe. So, yeah. She's, I'd say, one of the nicest things. Just, Kind of took me in emotionally I mean she accepted me and always been kind to me always um, which is the same kind of thing with my first stepmom she took me in I was nearly seven but she accepted me and she she gave me love for the period of time that we were all together from what, nine years, pretty much. So, yeah. And I just think, so it's not even so much like, how, what have they done? What's the kindest thing someone's done? In a sense of, what would a life been like if they hadn't done that thing? Because then it, it, it almost makes what they did more powerful. So, for example, if my first stepmom, let's say my dad, my dad, if he hadn't rescued us from the children's home, where would I have been? Where would I be if I'd have gone, I'd have been there to the age of 18 and then I would have been kicked out. It might have been 16, but it might have been 18. So I'd have I'd lived there and then I'd have been kicked out. And I might have spent the next... I might have had the last 30, 
six years in and out of institutions having grown up in an institution you know so it would have I'm not saying it would have been but I think there was a good chance I could have ended up that way which makes the taking me in and my first step mum taking us taking us on as her children even though she was like 21 herself with an 11 year old kid nine year old and a seven year old only been married for about seven months so that shows her character uh, her willingness to I mean that must have transformed her life because I think about when I was 21 mentally I was a kid physically I was a kid really but I was I wasn't no kind of adult at that age I'm not saying that 21 year olds aren't adults I'm saying that I wasn't I'm still not sometimes I couldn't look after three kids when I was 21 that would just blimey that would just be really really hard so and to be responsible for them so yeah so it's not necessarily just a case of what what's the kind of thing someone's done because it's looking back like what what's the result of what they did so it might not have seemed such a big deal at the time but the results so my friend Noel the results of him helping me is me making this recording because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him because that was the period when I started reading self-help books started listening to self-help audios uh, decided to do something to help myself to try and figure out what's going on and yeah it took me well I'm still doing it it's not not completed but it took me a long time to even figure out that there was something wrong well, I knew there was something wrong but I just at the same time kind of denied it so yeah a multitude of different people done things I'm trying to think if there's anything that stands out that I have not mentioned it's I can't think of anything right now and Andre Andre taught me the second Andre not the first one the Andre the ferret however silly that might this might sound what I'm about to say I didn't even yeah I went to university and I was trained as a person-centered counselor that was the first two years of the course that was to become a counselor third year was for the, the dissertation to get the degree so I trained in person centered counselling so the whole thing of unconditional positive regard is a big thing with um, Rogers you know theory Rogerian counselling or Rogerian psychotherapy I didn't understand unconditional love I didn't believe it existed really Maybe positive regard, maybe, but unconditional love. I uh, didn't really, couldn't see it. Yeah. But when I got Andre, I don't, I mean, I probably did have it with my nan as well. But it was something, there was a connection between me and Andre, and it, nothing he did, nothing he could have done could stop me from loving him by like anything honestly anything he he would do I would you know he used to, he'd push computers like laptops on the floor he'd ruin stuff he completely destroyed the flat but I adored him 
and so that that's probably the first thing so he taught me that I think and I got this little bundle of joy with me now Mr Vinny that's a different ball game that's I think he's trying to teach me patience I thought I was quite a patient person but he's he pushes my buttons as often as he can this one he's just so he's, he's got no interest in pleasing me it's all about him the whole time which is kind of how I used to live my life maybe I still do I don't know so the nicest thing anyone's done for me I think that's I think I've covered most of it, to be honest. I might not have done, but I think I have. It's... There's probably things that I can't, that are just not coming to mind. There's a couple of things that I just don't want to mention because they're too personal. But... Yeah... Um, there's been loads of just loads of kind kindness that I've experienced over the years loads lots so much really just little things I remember um, someone helping me put a sim card into my phone once because I just couldn't figure out how, how, how to do it and there's just like such a kindness just a little a small thing like that means something it's yeah yeah I've had a lot of people be kind to me over the years I'm trying to think of anything like up to date recent I can't think of anything right this second okay so thanks for that the next question is from Christine brown sauce or tomato sauce on what tomato sauce no brown sauce on anything uh, I, I used to I used to be able to drink okay not drink blimey I think the only thing that I would ever have had brown sauce on in the past would be egg and chips. Maybe maybe a cooked breakfast. Like HP sauce. That would be it. But it's a little bit too tangy, too spicy for me now. So tomato sauce would be the thing. And you know what would I have it in? Why wouldn't I have it on? Oh, so much, so much stuff. As soon as I thought about it, though, as soon as I mentioned tomato sauce to myself, I was thinking of mashed potato with tomato sauce, like whipped into it. Not completely whipped, but like enough just to colour it a bit and it's like it tastes so good tomato ketchup Heinz tomato ketchup Narva type this is a personal <laughs> has to be Heinz um, is it Heinz tomato soup Heinz tomato ketchup or have I got that wrong beans means Heinz I don't I don't know if um, that was a weird one I don't know if did yeah HP sauce which is the brown sauce tomato ketchup my dad loves brown sauce or well, used to anyway on eggs they work like fried eggs yeah brown sauce does really I think it's better on on yeah than, than um, tomato but tomato ketchup pretty much on anything a fried breakfast it's probably still now I don't eat fried breakfasts anymore um, I don't so yeah but when I did tomato ketchup would be the one I'd go for 
generally, although Brown's ketchup can work as well. But I've, yeah, I can, I can, I can mix it up a little bit. What I do like though, I know it's not a question you ask, but I discovered this in about 2001, I think it was, when we used to go into the pub, it was like a, like a, a work meeting thing, you know, at lunch, and part of the team would go and have lunch sometimes. And salad cream with chips. Oh my goodness. Yum, yum, yum. Salad cream. Mayonnaise, no. No, never. Never. Never mayonnaise, no. Salad cream. Oh. Mind you, homemade mayonnaise, that's a different story. But mayonnaise out of a bottle. Mm-mm-mm-mm. No. You know, get mm-mm-mm. That almost sounds like yes, doesn't it? Like yummy. Mm-mm-mm. That's a no, not mm-mm-mm. That's more yeah. So tomato ketchup, I would say... Is it Heinz? It is Heinz, isn't it? Yeah, I would say probably breakfast, egg sandwiches, all the things that I don't eat anymore. And anything, honestly, anything, especially something like a burger, on top of a burger in a bun with cheese or a hot dog, but like a proper sausage. Not one of those frankfurter, but proper, proper burnt sausage as well. I like burnt sausages with tomato ketchup. Not not big into mustard. And yeah, tomato ketchup in it, anything really. This, I think it works. It can even work on a roast dinner, but you do need gravy as well though, I think. You don't I don't think I need need tomato ketchup on a roast dinner. But then I know that it can ups, it can annoy people sometimes when they've cooked the dinner and you start covering it with tomato ketchup. Which was part of the reason why I used to do it. I don't know why, I just used to like just immature, I guess. Not the mature man that I am now. Yeah. I mean, I whenever when I was in my twenties, when everyone cooked, when anybody cooked for me, I'd always at the end of the evening I shout out, "Thanks for the grub," and I just leave. I was like, it's so rude. Um, so that's it, tomato sauce, all the way, without a doubt. But I haven't had any tomato ketchup. Well, it's come up tomato ketchup, tomato sauce. Haven't had any. I then want to get uh, some chips occasionally, but you know I'm trying to keep off that stuff. So thank you for that, Diana asked me, which is better, bath or shower, or depending on where you live in the in the UK, a bath or a shower. So my answer to this. 30 years ago would have been bath. 100%. Shower's quicker. But bath. Always prefer the bath. It's more, I just found it to be more relaxing. But I used to be skinny. I used to be able to fit into a bath. And because I've never been like hugely tall. It, you know, I've never had it done. If I was 6 foot 7. It'd be a problem. Getting into, you know, it's like, where the hell do you put bits but as I got bigger baths were just not very comfortable to be fair and it did sometimes feel like I don't know I'm trying to think uh, Trying to think of an example of what it's like. I 
I suppose it's you remember the things when you're kids and you've got different like round circles, squares, triangles, whatever. It's trying to get a a square into a circle. That's kind of or you could say circle into a square even. It just my body wasn't fitting into the bath. I remember when I lived with someone and I was trying to get in and they, they were saying, why are you moaning so much when you're getting into the bath? And I said, it wasn't me. The bath's moaning. The bath complained. Honestly, wanted a rent reduction. For having to put up with me, which is a bit rude. So yeah, and plus I get stuck in the bath now. It's, if, if you know... It's kind of a suction thing. I just get, literally just get stuck to the bottom and like, okay, how am I going to get out of this? And I did actually, when I first moved in here, I was so looking forward to having a bath. I hadn't had a bath where I lived for one, two, three, yeah, 2007 was the last time I had a bath where I was living and I moved in here in 14 what's that 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 so 7 years so the 3 different places I lived in before here I hadn't, I'd only had showers so it was nice to have a bath but I think the second week I'm, I live in here maybe the first or second week Probably the first week actually, I slipped out of the bath and I broke my wrist. So that wasn't a good sign. But I do have a shower attachment. So I like a shower because I do like the I like the feeling of a powerful shower spraying down on my body, especially top top of my head. That feels lovely. Very relaxing and massagey. Scalp massaging. But it's nice to have a power shower, I think. I don't have one of them. At least my my shower, it's basically one of those ones that's, it was already connected when I first moved in here. So someone's connected the, you, you pull the button up and the right and left, like this hot water and the cold water, kind of mingled together to come out of the, the nozzle. And you have to like keep changing them until it's at the right temperature. But the, the shower I had before I moved here, it was just a drip. <laughs> Seriously. There was no power, no energy, no f water force at all. It was very difficult to get wet. Never mind rinse off. But I lived there for a couple of years. How long did I live there from? March two thousand that March two thousand and twelve until April two thousand and fifteen. So yeah, pretty much three years, blindly. So I I suppose I'd go for a shower, but I do prefer a bath, still. But it'd have to be a big bath. But then getting in and out, because I've got my back, it's a little bit stiff, a little, you know, it's a little bit harder to get in and out. But ultimately, I think a bath, all I need really is a jacuzzi style, not maybe a jacuzzi, but a, a jacuzzi size bath. So, not for anyone else to get in, just for me. So, it can just, there's enough room, basically. I do used to have a friend that had um, a bath that was like a jacuzzi. It wasn't, it was big. It was big. And it was kind of very kind of roundish. So, it wasn't as big as the kind of thing you'd get in a health spa. But you could definitely fit at least two people in very comfortably. But I'm just thinking to myself, just that it'd be nice to have a big 
a really nice big bath or jacuzzi style kind of thing uh, maybe one day but shower at the moment is probably more more practical but a power shower that's what I like uh, my dad's got a power shower and it's like proper full on blast it's uh, there's still a hole in the wall when they first tested it they didn't realise how powerful it was going to be it's in the shape of my dad because it blew him through the wall that was kind of like a cartoon image there but yeah um, that was silly so definitely I would say for comfort bath for speed a shower and yeah I think a bit of both it's nice to have both but shower's a bit easier I think yeah but if it was a nice bath probably a bath yeah that's what I'd say I mean I've had baths when I was a kid we had baths in the children's home we used to have baths on a Sunday night yeah I think that was our weekly brush of now I brush my teeth weekly because that we had to we had to clean our teeth in front of the I don't know if it was the nuns or the care workers so we had had no choice but to clean our teeth and then um yeah I think it was just once a once a week a once a week bath but we did have a like a washroom next to the dormitory so that was generally where we would clean our teeth and I think we used to there was toilets probably urinals and I think there was loads of sinks that would just wash and stuff so still wash every day So the bath, I'm just trying to think of how many different places that I lived in that had baths. So the next place I lived in, I had a bath. Then the next pla place had a bath. The main house for the family, between about 79 and 86, that had a bath and a shower. And then, yeah, the next place I lived had a bath. The next place I lived, the chip shop flat above the chip shop, that had a bath. Then the next place I lived had a bath. Then the next place I lived had a bath. The next place I lived had a bath. The next place I lived had a bath. That had a bath. That one 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 had a bath. That one. I think that one had a shower. Yeah, I think that one had a shower. And then. When I moved back to London. There was a bath, but there was also a shower. And. Because I was working shifts, my landlady didn't like it when I was having a bath because it was too early in the morning. But you imagine all those years I'd always had baths and suddenly I was being moaned at for having a bath. Use the shower, as she used to say. Use out the shower, that's what she used to say. Not the bather, the shower. Uh. I was like, okay. And that used to annoy me because I was used to just, well, I've always used a, had a bath. That was what I always did. I'm not saying I always. I mean, sometimes I'd have a shower if the shower was available. You know, I would sometimes, but <clears throat> generally a bath is what I'd have. So when I moved out of there, I think they had a shower. And I moved out of there. 
there was a bath and a shower, but I used the bath there. There was a shower in the bath, as it, you know, on the, a bracket on the wall. So I used the bath. Then I moved at Butlins. There were showers. Then I moved again. There was a bath there. So I, there was a shower as well, but I used the bath mainly. And then I moved again. And there was a bath. And then I moved again. So there was a bath, but with a shower inside the bath. Then I moved again, and that was a shower, I do believe. Then I moved again, and that was a bath. Then I moved again, and that was a bath. And I moved again, that was a bath. Then I moved again, and that was a, I think that was a shower. Then I moved again, and that was a bath. Then I moved again, and that was a bath. Um, then I moved again. That was a shower. Yeah, that was a shower. And then the next one was a shower. Then the next one was a shower. And then the next one was a bath. This this is where I am now. I've missed out a few few of the different places, but that's kind of roughly. Yeah, I've missed out quite a few. I can't remember which ones. But most of them were baths. Yeah, so I'd say I probably prefer a bath. Yeah. Um, Anne asks, How do you spend your days other than helping us all sleep? I like to think about the baths that I've <laughs> had over the years. That's one of my main things. Um... Thanks for your question. Um, what do I like to do? How do you spend your days? Well, there's quite a lot going on in, in the background of these podcasts because I spend quite a bit of time working on the website. Um, you know, this, there's various different things that go on that I'm sort of working on. Um yeah, just the website alone. I could spend all day working on the website. So I've been trying to update it. And it's took me months and months to do that. And I'm still not... It's it's complete to a degree, but it's, it's not. There's still loads I need to do. So what do I do? This I mean, I take this one out for about four times a day. I... Yeah, I like things I like to do. I like to watch a movie every now and then. Uh, maybe get into a TV show. So, for example, coming up on this Sunday, it's now Friday, so two days away. Big Brother in the UK starts again, so I will be watching that every day. And if there's a big boxing fight on, I will watch that. So I look forward to that. It, there's not a lot else really going on. I sort of, I suppose I watch YouTube videos, listen to audio books, and focusing or being kind of trying to prepare for the psychology degree that I've started. Well, well yeah, I kind of have started it now. It officially starts tomorrow on the 5th, but there's the week before, so there's the pre week, which I've I haven't completed yet. What else? Uh, that's kind of it, really. Not a lot else going on. Sort of looking after this little one. And trying to make a difference in my own little way. And kind of hoping for the best, I guess. Hoping that something good will come out of this. And that uh, I'll be, that I am helping. So yeah. That's kind of, that's it really. There's not a lot else going on in my life. It's, I just, it's this. 
um, trying to get into the routine of doing one every day. Maybe not on a Saturday. I have a tendency of taking Saturday off. Uh, that which coincides with the boxing, generally. But, yeah, for each recording, I mean, I know this; these ones are usually quite long. And I think I've been talking for about two hours. But the the editing, uploading, processing, all that stuff for this recording is going to take me another couple of hours in the morning. So sometimes longer. So I'm spending probably at least three and a half, four hours a day working on the podcasts. Just the actual podcast itself. The individual new podcast. And then there's the... I've got to make images and then upload to the website. And there's, there's quite a bit of administration stuff that goes on. But once it's done, it's good. It's usually done by about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, like all completely updated. And I start at about 5 in the morning. Four or five, I have a break, but generally by ten o'clock it's all done. So it's also creating a video as well, and that that takes probably about an hour or more to process, and then another maybe another hour to upload and process again when it's once it's uploaded, because I have to check it to make sure, or YouTube check it to make sure there's nothing on there that's against their guidelines. Uh, which there there never is anyway because I don't I don't do kind of any stuff like that. So yeah, so that's and then I suppose it's with the degree course coming up. I'll be spending a fair bit of time, like three hours a day, doing that going forward. So it's going to be, be quite busy. But yeah, at the moment, the things I like to do, I quite like to watch. I like to watch, I don't watch television much at all, but I do watch, you know, Netflix or stuff like that. And I like to keep track of the news as well, just to keep updated. And to watch a movie every now and then. But yeah. Well, thank you all for your questions. That brings us to the end because this has gone over two hours. I know for a fact because, well, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure I said it was 12 minutes past four when I started. And it's now 21 minutes past six. So I'm guessing it's gone on a little while. I might be wrong. You never know. So, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. And be gentle with yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also
think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found 
being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting.
in fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to 
visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity, with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down.
because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. being released from your brain and your mind Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists,
muscles in the front of your body. Also, feeling peaceful. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel.
spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. your knees, Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. your elbows, feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. tips of your toes, to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Letting go, really letting go. Peace, drifting. Wandering away happy.
happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
have noticed your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it, it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck. Focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks. And all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and even though we're about to focus on your shoulders your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose they're already feeling calm and they're feeling that those muscles and move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just travelling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message
into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so deeply relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time so light and gentle Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels fingers
tips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, Focus to your legs, muscles in your thighs, your knees, so muscles and your shins completely
peaceful, so calm. So peaceful. So calm. go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
16. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eleven. Eight. Seven.
six.
you focus on your eyes. We're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find All you want to do is just drift off to sleep. And if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes. I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
If you're counting down from ten to one, what do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time I'll go a bit slower. This time as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down 10 Nine, eight, seven, six. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down so I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four. Three, two, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I, surely I should be out in in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Gains such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily. I'll speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate. All that my knees do for me. Until. I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a. Maybe I bash it or. It's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs 
your shins and your calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, a thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. It's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I thought, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. And I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And it's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. And that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees your calves your ankles The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only 8 stone it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy your legs really are amazing and I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching. As far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch. As the tension has reduced a lot. going to count down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. 
and the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them. You require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more and more relaxed Starting with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body we're going to focus on your hands because the more relaxed your hands are the more relaxed your body and mind are you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing focusing on your hands noticing how they feel because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body, and you may noticed that your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers more and more relaxed with each number from eight to one, you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming Going down from eight 
drifting, drifting again, starting with Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. And this is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and 
overthinking, so anxiety, tension, just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body You start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves not 
just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try to stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's 
it's also really easy. It's very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow transforming your life in positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be and that positivity grows within you each and every day moving forward going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises 
you can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Which makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go with everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, 
twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. Eight, seven, six, five. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not 
purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax. It's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. Your focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down. body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body, is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift. That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is 
to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts. That's also what will happen. Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax deeply. to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, in on a different part of your body, and you may find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting, and you alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone and the more you drift sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep, and it feels so nice. and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so Focus 
shoulders. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? It's almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focus in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
observing your ankles. Being aware of the physical sensations in your ankles. Noticing now your toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes to sin. Letting go. Letting go. Letting. go letting go letting I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported 
and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. And I'll move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing, but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage to the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massage in the, the back of your neck. 
especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, Sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in. To get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area. To your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just. Pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure. Quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really... Release the tension to really get into those muscles and you can let your fingers in there and it can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders. And now as we move down your arms we do one arm at a time Starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up. Just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. down to your forearms 
into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down.
start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top, starting again where we already be at being, that area at the top in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back and massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke. The middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost the part that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down. Moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle. Yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine. We can massage the muscles on either side of your spine. From the top of your neck all the way down. To your lower back. We can do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down. Go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body. Stretching your body. So that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, I'm going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. Or to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process 
which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time it feels so releasing. This is a mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back, doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging 
the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there it's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body that's up to you You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. And then working down to your calf muscles massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose using both hands and fingers digging deep to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles 
firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over in your mind, laying on your back, I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. And as we move up. I can clean my hands. Make them more fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead. Your eyes are closed and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit. Pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. Just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up. Stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Then moving down again. And then allowing my hand 
hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well. An area that really doesn't get much attention. But feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body. Or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently, massaging. From one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling, as I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting 
pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet. feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number, as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. And as we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, 
you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply tired. down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment, they may start to just not even notice them. at all, because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon, who likes to say hello sometimes. There's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number do you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too so easy 
so simple. Well, we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change. how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting with one hundred, blow out that candle now. Ninety nine. Six. Ninety-seven. 
twenty three. Eighty six.
82. Seventy eight candle seventy seven. Seventy-four.
Cinco. Sixty four Candle sixty three. Sixty. Oh. 
Fifty-six. Candle fifty four. Candle fifty two.
handle. Forty-eight. Forty-seven.
handle.
28. Seven.
Commodore 17.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, That's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen. You've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Ah, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again. For a little while at least. And if you choose. You can just sit there. For maybe an hour or two. And it feels. Blissful. And just by sitting down. Like that. Your body knows. That it's time to relax. Your body. Has been given permission. From you. Because it's a mindset in your mind. You're prepared 
to let go of everything and just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. Any tensions can just gradually vanish. almost like magic really because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state it's not something unusual it may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax it may seem almost alien but it isn't it's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely to relax totally the most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button and all the tension just releases it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind-up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength, as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper, and you may find that the more relaxed you feel, that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else. And then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. You start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier and more natural effortless as that cool air enters 
breathe through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathe them in comfort and relaxation. And then just breathe in out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are come to a standstill, or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and uh, relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is great healing experience for you and has so many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind. Even your bones are relaxed. All your muscles are relaxed. Even the skin covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have is also deeply relaxed. And your brain starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to read even more deeply relaxing even more completely letting go of any remaining thoughts or concerns they're no longer necessary in 
this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated healing. of your brain, feeling so loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body, even deeper. You feel deeper, deeper, relaxed, deeper and deeper, relaxed, calm, so
do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off focusing on your hands just be aware of your hands I'd like you to move your hands around just maybe move your fingers a little bit open and closing your hands very gently just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet and if you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around moving your toes gently but only very Gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squint in your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Focusing on your thighs. And I just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, 
practicing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Focus to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. But only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything. It has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area, below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin, maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently. And slowly, if 
that is a difficult thing to do. Maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention. in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gentle so that you can be aware of how you feel. on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down again.
to observe your lower back, and that back part is just above your hips, where your coccyx are. also really does include the sides of your body because those muscles are very much connected as those muscles also move into your hip area connecting to your buttocks the sides of your hips If you're physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. Just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even. Gently and slowly in order to really be in touch with the physical sensations of your lower back. can just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your
this in now, your chest area, and you don't need to do anything to move your chest, because it moves every time you breathe. of your back, your upper back, and the middle, the middle of your back, again this part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that. Usually as you observe
six, the groin, those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. 
starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings of all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm. There may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling. You know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back
the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of your back and sometimes like right now actually when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, but just stretched a little bit, even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back it just seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back comes along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest but at the side underneath it's pretty much the same whether you're a man or a woman there's muscles there muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest and when I notice that I focus on my chest I feel it in my, my back my upper back I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing in. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. doesn't feel 
I've got a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I've noticed my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. In your back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, And you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax. It relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention Behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect 
to happen. For a relaxation to fill your body Maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away. Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind. Just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice. 
because your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature And even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. As that sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation that is filling your body your mind and as you focus on your mind and you count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear your mind will become slightly more relaxed just just slightly so from 10 to nine, just a slight movement, nine down to eight, just 
another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now feelings of comfort and security and confidence and that gap becomes wider eight down to seven seven down to six when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation, almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. And then down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. place full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two. When you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. It's almost a perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. A place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes and just count slowly from 10 down to one and re-experience these feelings in your mind and when 
when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body travels through your bloodstream healing and relaxing every particle of your existence and we can we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from 10 down to 1 the feelings of comfort calmness and Deep, deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. And I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself 10. And just notice, be aware of how you feel. In your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1, 
faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself, then you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers. Maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. So I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. get to one, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, then the music will continue.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again, this time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach, just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather so surrounding your belly button area that whole area you can feel the tension of your body whatever's left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11,
can open your eyes again if you choose, or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift off into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well. So your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically. Almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something. Or, I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something. You know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area, because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind your brain and from your mind and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead or your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In. And as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, your 
back of your neck and the front of your neck, the sides of your neck and your throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, also the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go. do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air, almost sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool, and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head. Just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen.
Noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel. feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely. That peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. If you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose to feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind that you're going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I want to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax now. Now I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focused on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
could feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension has been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself. But I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax, in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally, but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now, just say, relax to the back of your neck, and I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my, lower, my, my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing. So I'm just going to ask that part to relax. And you can do the same now. Relax your upper back. something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids and now back of the neck, top of the back back. The rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face... You focus on your eyes your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. We're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe... You can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders to relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck. Being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body. 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds. And the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself, relax. Without focusing on any particular part of your body. Because when you know that telling your hands to relax and your hands relax, you tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax. Tell the back of your neck to relax and it relaxes. You tell your upper back. You tell your shoulders to relax. told your hands to relax, they relaxed and they continued to relax. And you told your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows to relax, they relaxed and continued to relax. Then you told the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck, and told it to relax. And it relaxed and continued to relax. You told your upper back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes to relaxation spread to your forehead. Around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. to the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. All the way down to your ankles. The tops of your feet. The sides of your feet. And the bottoms of your feet. Relaxing. Into your toes. Each toe. Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, Easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself relax means that you don't need to focus on just one part you can just focus on your entire body word relax and the 
gives uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feeling more relaxed. So that all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen, Twelve,
Amen. Seven.
to Body has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed. Everything is calmer. As a cat. say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will feel twice as relaxed Starting 